Merry Christmas and welcome to church. It is wonderful to see all of you. My name is Jeremy Grenhart and I serve as the music director at Christ Lutheran in Bethesda, Maryland. And for our online services, I'm also your host. And it's my pleasure to welcome everyone into this space. If you're new here, we wanna make sure that you know that you're welcome. And if you're an old friend and you've been along this journey with us, welcome back. It's great to see you too. You're stumbling across us on social media. You're just doing a Christmas or Easter thing from the comfort of your own home. Wherever it is you are along your faith journey, we want to let you know that you are most welcome in this space. Now the way we usually begin our service is with a time of confession and forgiveness, but instead what we're going to do today is just kind of acknowledge that we're We've reached the end of the season of Advent, and we've entered into the season of Christmas this morning. So I don't have an Advent wreath, but what I do have is some beautiful candles from Ikea. We're a church that likes to improvise. And if you want to go ahead and improvise with me, uh, that would be super cool. I think Jesus would be okay with that, and I'm certainly not going to call the liturgy police on you. And what I'm just going to do right now is just acknowledge that we have gone through these these four weeks of Advent together. And I'm going to light a candle that just acknowledges each one of those weeks that we have spent in preparation. 
And then this morning, the beautiful thing is we get to light the Christ candle. Which reminds us, Emmanuel, that God is now among us. Christ is with us. And if this is a joyous season for you, then guess what? Christ is with you, Emmanuel. And if this season is really hard for you, Christ is also with you. Let's sing about that one more time before we get into the Word.
Christ is with us. Well, it's now time in our service where we get into the Word of God. And we have this international ministry of the Word that we have going. And we're going to hear Psalm 97 this morning. And our epistle is from the book of Titus all the way at the end. And uh, our gospel this morning is going to come from the gospel according to St. Luke. A reading from Psalm 97. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around Him. Righteousness and justice are the fountain of His throne. Fire goes before Him and consumes His adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim His righteousness, and all the peoples behold His glory. All servants of images are put to shame. Those who make their boast in worthless idols, all gods bow down before Him. Zion hears and is glad, and the towers of Judah rejoice. Because of your judgments, O God, for you, O Lord, are most high over all, all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lalitha John. I am a member of Christ Lutheran, and I'm also serving on our church council. Today's reading is taken from Titus, chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. Here begins the reading. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Here ends the reading. Well, greetings. This is uh, intended to be Christmas Day. Uh, all the readings for, for Christmas, including the Christmas story. So let me read the uh, Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria and all went to be enrolled, 
each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. And the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with fear. And they said, and the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men, with whom he is pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please don't be deceived. Don't be deceived this Christmas. And don't be deceived by Christmas. Now, I'm not talking about the persistent commercialization of Christmas. I've come to understand that commercial interests really appreciate Christmas more than we may. And they know the the glad the tidings of great joy very well. Black Friday is not meant to be sinister, but joyful. It's salvation for many businesses. Maybe not the kind God intended, but it's salvation nonetheless. Now there, there there's something else about Christmas that is deceptive. something more at the religious end of things. It's the way Chris, the Christmas event is depicted so often. The stillness, the beatific glow, all the com commercialism of Christmas. It is the temptation always for us to mistake stillness for peace. So don't be deceived. Peace is the word that connects to the Christmas event. The angel chorus announces, announces it loud and clear. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. We echo it in our liturgy. In the hymn of praise, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. God's gift is peace. But so much of Christmas wants to seduce us into thinking stillness instead. Stillness, placid, passive, pleasant, pleasing stillness. We forget that the first recipients 
of the proclamation were scared to death. They were frightened shepherds. Their stillness was broken. The quiet night sky erupted with a blaze of light and a blast of sound, an angel chorus, and they were sore afraid. It's hard to relish stillness when your heart is pounding. Ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. And to the contrary, your stillness is gone. It's over. And the scene at the stable, at the stable imagine that, how deceptive that is. All of the soft light. But look underneath. The extreme discomfort of homelessness. No place to sit down, much less lay your head. There's, there's no place to sit in a stable. No place to put your feet up and snooze by the fire. And then all of the commotion of delivery. A baby is being born without the security of doctors and nurses or even a midwife. And then there's the, the palpable anxiety of a teenage mother and of a young man barely shaving, hardly knowing why they're there. All of this swirling emotion, the near panic, the, the sheer exhaustion. Now that's more like Christmas. That's more in line with what Christmas is about for us. Are you worn out? Are you exhausted? Did you get all those things done that you had planned to do? Have you felt that stillness yet? I hope it comes. I hope it comes at least for a moment. But if it does, don't count it as Christmas, only as a respite. God's gift is peace, not stillness. The peace announced over Bethlehem's plain, peace given to real people in a real world as hectic and as demanding, as chaotic as our own. It's peace that Jesus lives as, leaves his legacy to his followers. When he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. It's the peace that he announces after his resurrection to, to witnesses, to disciples who are scared to death. Peace be with you, he says. It's the peace Peace for the worst of times and peace for the best of times. And every time in between. Peace for our time. Peace for all time. It's peace unending because Christ himself is our peace. Our peace with God, having been justified by faith, having been put right with God by him, he has opened access to this grace in which we stand. He is our peace with one another, who has brought us together and broken down the dividing wall of hostility between races, nations, between generations, sexes, between political persuasions, lifestyles, 
everything. He is our peace, God's gift, not stillness. Peace, the gift of Christmas. But how do you know when that gift is yours? How do you know when, when this peace has been planted and taken root in you and is living and growing in you? How do you know? You know when you walk a little easier because you're not weighted down by guilt. You know when your outlook is more than is more than and is more joyful than dreary. You know when when your reach exceeds your grasp and there's always more to accomplish than you can do because there's hopefulness, vitality. How do you know? You know when you are more concerned about people than things. When you don't sweat the small stuff, you have a, a certain sense of proportion. When you, when you discover God to be in your thoughts and decisions, your values and your outlook. When, when you don't need a special holiday to revive your spirit of giving or your sense of gratitude or your love of life, or your awe at the wonders of creation. How do you know when this gift of peace has taken root and lives in you? You know when you, you know in whom you have believed and what you stand for. When, when you relax in the embrace of this gracious God turning over to God what you cannot handle. Letting go and letting God, as they say. How do you know? You know when you face the future with confidence, no matter what that holds for you. When you seek out the community of faith, you're urgent to worship with praise and thanksgiving, when you're eager to learn and to grow, when you're urgent to be about the work, the one who has been born for us, lived and died and rose again for us, our peace, Christ, the gift of Christmas. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Lou. You know, well, we always appreciate you being with us, but it's extra special when you can deliver a Christmas message to us this morning. So thanks for being with us. And we're going to sing a little bit. I, I found this tune. It's called uh, Some Children See Him. It's originally by a, a composer in the, the middle part of last century called uh, Alfred Burt. Uh, and it's a, it's a song about how ch different kids can see Jesus in different ways. You know, some kids see him lily white, some kids see him with almond eyes, some kids see him dark as they, and, and Jesus shows up for all of them, so, you know, our perception uh, can kind of change, or sometimes we get locked into a certain thing, and we think that that's the only way that Jesus shows up, and, and this song kind of reminds us, like, no, he can, he can show up in a lot of ways for a lot of people, uh, so I, I hope that the, the text resonates with you, and uh, our team and I had, a, had an opportunity to, to write an arrangement for this that we, that we hope you equally enjoy. So let's get into a little bit of song right now. Here we go.
Merry Christmas to you and your family. Thank you for joining us during our special Christmas service. I invite you into this time for our prayer, prayers of the people. This is a special time which we bring all the celebrations and the concerns of our hearts and minds to God. As we do so, we ask you to take a position of prayer that best suits you where you are. As we come together, we ask you to clear those mi your mind of any burdens and which trouble you as we lay them all at the foot of the cross. For our world, Almighty Father, today we give thanks for the gift that represents hope, joy, peace, and love for all people. Isaiah chapter seven, uh, verse 14 foretold, therefore this, the Lord himself will give you a sign Behold, the virgin seal conceive and bear a son, and we shall call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. Merciful God, our world needs empathy and love now more than ever. Help us to remember those and help those who are maybe less fortunate than us. Help us to identify the places in which experience the sins of violence and corruption and help find ways to help those who are suffering. Show us fellowship and that Fellowship in you can mean fellowship and love among others too. We pray for more peace among nations and brotherly love in unexpected places. Help us to recognize more of you and others. And we thank you for the opportunity to have a life anew in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. community. This Christmas, help us to contemplate what Emmanuel represents in our communities. We are often reminded of the darkness that life can bring into our lives. However, there are many instances of you, O oh God, showing up in our neighborhoods. Kind words between neighbors, there are homeless shelters, social justice organizations and activists, emergency personnel, doctors, nurses, etc. The list goes on. And this provides a reminder that you are a living, omnipresent God in our lives, whose light indeed overcomes the darkness. We pray for, food, for true fellowship through Christ and are thankful for the reminder that we are not alone in our journey. Remind us that our weakness is made strong through God. And the more we trust in you, the more our faith is made perfect. Help us to make more choices that lead us to actions that illuminate your love to all that we come in contact with. Father God, let our city seek to center our focus on you this season. We pray that you will bring those who don't know you into your welcoming arms. May we who do not also know you draw closer in holiness and oneness with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, church. Christmas is the ultimate reminder of our purpose as a church. Christ's birth is in the is the word in which we follow made flesh. May the story of Jesus's birth inspire us to be a church of joy like the shepherds who first heard the birth of the Messiah, a church of worship like the wise men who gave gifts to baby Jesus, and a church that sings glorious praise like the angels heard on high all year round. Remind us to welcome all into our church home. As Christ is the light of the world, help us to share light, that light with others so that we may understand the good news of Jesus. We are very blessed to have the means to connect with each other to grow disciples through this virtual worship experience. 
We thank you for our readers. We thank you for our pastor for our message today. We thank you for our organizers, editors, musicians, those who share our service with family and friends, and all of the, and all others who put forth a labor of love to bring this worship experience to more homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord. people. Almighty God, we thank you for the birth of your son that has given us hope and prosperity. As we look towards the coming year, we pray that you keep and protect us all. We pray that we will always delight in the Lord and that you will grant us the desires of our heart. And we pray for your continual blessings from this day forward, that you will continue to direct our path as we look to you for guidance. We pray for anyone whom this holiday season might be difficult we pray especially for our, those coping with mental illness, addiction, loss of relationships, loss of friends or family members, or financial difficulty. We thank you, Lord, in advance for covering us in the midst of any of our personal storms. And we thank you for bringing hope to our world and showing us that through you, we can conquer all of our difficulties. We now open up the virtual spiritual space for the prayers of the people. Please feel free to take this moment to offer up any prayers you might have either aloud or silently to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen. We place all of these prayers, the ones we haven't prayed yet, in the silent meditations of our hearts. We place them at the foot of the cross in Jesus' holy name. In the words that he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Thanks, Taylor. And may Christmas blessings be upon you and your household. Well, if you want to check our schedule and see when you can be worshiping with us in person and when you're going to be at home, uh, just go check out our website, which is Christ, ChristLutheranBethesda.org, and you can check out our schedule and ways that you can support and give to and engage the ministry. Okay, let's sing one more time. Here we go.
Please receive this benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs>